Hi everyone! It's Lisa Harden from the Stamping Zoo, back with you for a little bit of stamping fun. And probably some fun that doesn't have anything to do with stamping also. <laughs> That's what we like, right? So come on in, um, be ready to be wowed, entertained, inspired, all of that. Uh, that's setting pretty lofty goals for myself. As I was saying it, I was thinking to myself, Lisa, you need to pull it back. Pull it back. It's called, uh, what's the saying? Over, deliver, and under promise. <laughs> right? Hello, ladies coming in. Kathy and Amy and Julie and Susan. Oh, four of my favorites. It only gets better from here, right? And Anne... Anne is coming live from Utah. Hello, Anne. <laughs> wow, I'm international. Or no, let me. Well, wait, let's see. Are we going to get an Australian on here? <laughs> we will. And then when we will, when we do, it's going to be international. <laughs> How about that? Pretty impressive if I do say so myself. So everyone... We're gonna play with this beautiful stamp set tonight called Tasteful Touches. I think there must be something in the air because I was just watching my stamping friend, Victoria Ann, Stamp with Vicki, and she was using the stamp set too. So I told her it would be really fun to see our variations. And um, I watched uh, I watched her make at least one card before I switched over. And uh, yep, we're gonna have definite variations. So we're going to show you a million different ways to use this stamp set. This is part of a suite. Oh, wait. Wait. I can't believe I didn't mention this. There's something different about today, isn't there? <gasps> I can flush you now. Yes, look at that. Fresh pages from the new catalog. We can look at all of them without being worried. Uh, we can talk about the products. Well, here are the in colors. Aren't they beautiful? You get that if you order a catalog from me. Just a little swatch bookmark. So anyway, love it, right? I love all this stuff. So let me turn to where this stamp set is because it's part of a really beautiful suite of things. Uh, tasteful touches. So in the back, there's a nice, there are a few different um, indexes. This is a stamp set index, and it says it's on page 124, if you can believe that. We have 190 pages of beautiful products, and guess what? Anything in this catalog, I can sell to you. So I hope that if you are uh, just coming on and you've never stamped before, I hope you will give me a chance to earn your business, and I can, can help you find just the right product for the right budget. And I mean that. So anyway, here is the beautiful stamp set that we're going to use tonight. Like I said, $23 US. It has a set of dies that coordinates with it, and they're really great. They're for labels, mostly. Um, I don't have those yet, but that's okay because we have them in the catalog. They're, it's a beautiful picture. So when you go to the back, you can see all of the die bundles. And this is the die bundle that comes with that stamp set. If you buy both the dies and the stamp set at the same time, you get 10% off. So it's $48.50. And there are 10 dies in here. And as you can see, it's just all labels. Some of them are meant to fit a couple of the sentiments exactly. And others are just meant to be used with the stamp set or with any other stamp set, right? You just let your imagination guide you. Okay, so here's the rest of the suite. The suite has this beautiful DSP, that, that means designer series paper, in the biz, right? So it has beautiful DSP, and um, we've already used some of that, but you can see they've given us some great examples. So the catalog is as much an idea book as it is a catalog for the products. Uh, it's gorgeous. And uh, anyway, so you can get the bundle, the designer series paper, there's an embossing folder also en route to my house, and some elements that I believe are on low inventory are not orderable right now because they were very popular. So um, we will talk about those at another time. Tonight, though, I just really wanted to focus on this 
stamp set because it's really versatile. It's really fun. It gives you beautiful images. And let's see here, I've stamped all of them. Lots of times I will stamp as a little example. I know you can see the pictures here, right? But it's different. It's different every time you stamp them. So it's different, you know, they look a little different based on what colors you use, what mediums you use. And so here they are just stamped in, I think it's Rococo Rose or yeah, it's Rococo Rose. Anyway, so I've stamped the images here and then these are the other three sentiments or four sentiments. I, th I love the mix of fonts. That's I'm a sucker for a mixed font. <laughs> Put that on a bumper sticker and see how many honks you get, right? Probably from English teachers. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm fine with that. English teachers are cool. So uh, off to the right, I have not used the DSP tonight to make this card uh, because it's just one pretty easy way that you can use the stamp sets away from the given color palette, I guess the DSP, it's always nice to explore stamp sets away from their full suite because then you can get a very different look. So what I did here for you is this is almost a one a single layer card. The only piece that is up uh, is this thin strip of black. This is just a thin strip of black cardstock. This is... Um, a little my idea, a little Jennifer McGuire's idea, and so you know that it's going to be a good mix. <laughs> Heavy on the Jen McGuire, but she's great to watch. So, and then on the inside, this is just plainly stamped, and that's how gorgeous that image is. It's not quite distinctive, it's not quite just line drawing, it's kind of in the middle. And so, anyway, I love this card. We're going to make this card tonight, but in different color combinations. And then I was just playing around with the feather. The feathers probably was the gotcha stamp for me, right? I didn't really need to see anything else. I loved the feather. <laughs> and so here, okay, this is very simple. Again, I've just stamped it over and over in Rococo Rose on Whisper White. But then, and it doesn't show up very well. We're going to make a bigger, um, what do I want to say? Uh, let me just tell you what's on here first. I used embossing paste and one of the stencils. And you can color embossing paste any color, but I just left it white. So anyway, um, we're going to do this technique, but with different colors to show off that embossing paste a little bit better. And um, just to play with other colors, right? We have lots of colors to play with. <laughs> hey, thank you, Debbie, for sharing. Just happened to notice that. And if you wouldn't mind sharing... As you're watching this it really helps my little business get out there and get the word uh, get the word of the stamp and zoo out on the street so to speak and uh, you never know when one of your friends might want to jump into this fun thing called stamping with you and then all of a sudden you have a stamping friend right so thank you in advance for that now how I made this is uh, I made multiples at the same time and when you're finished, you have four different panels that you can play with then. And so this was a little bit different technique. But again, it was kind of a time saving and kind of just a different artistic approach to your stamps. And then in the end, you have four different card fronts. So I really like that. Let's just jump into it. Okay, we can we have time to chat. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, the phone is fully charged. <laughs> and I have the I can plug it in if we need to okay so we're here so what I have is a piece of pool pool party I can't speak um, new to it sorry piece of pool party I have cut it down to seven and a half by ten and where I got those measurements is I want my card fronts to be so the paper is seven and a half by 10 because I want four card fronts at three and three quarters by five. Wow. And you thought you were never going to use math. Yep. So we're, this is how we're going to make four card panels at the same time. 
<laughs> and um, then if that's not enough geeking out for you, um, I'm going to turn that over. What is this little thing up here? My lighting is really good. And so I can see every little thing. What is this? Get off there. We'll use this side. Perfect. Okay. So, um, you know, I like to bring my ruler in, but now I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm going to bring the T-square in. <laughs> okay. So if you can't, um, if you can't deal with just drawing straight lines out of thin air, like I can't use the T-square. Okay. So remember I said we're, we want four panels of three and three quarters by five. The only thing we really need to separate right now is we need to come down the middle because these are going to be three and three quarters. No, I take that back. These are going to be five inches long. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. See now, this is harder for me to do when I'm talking. The math part's harder for me to do when I'm talking. But um, as you can see from the T-square, this is 10 inches. Wow, exactly. I am such a master. I'm a master trimmer. I want a little pencil mark here for the five. Okay. And then we're just going to bring this straight down. And that's why I'm using the T-square. Because then I can just draw a really light line and I know it's exactly straight. I don't have to make a bunch of little X's and all that stuff. There you go. Can you see it, Maria? So take a screenshot. I'm sorry. I should have like made it look prettier than that, but take a little screenshot of this. So you can make your card fronts, of course, four and a quarter by up to four and a quarter by five and a half, whatever you choose based on the uh, stamp set you're going to use or the look you want, you can make them bigger or smaller. Okay. So, and then when you do that, of course, you just double the measurements. So again, I wanted three and three quarters by five. So I have seven and a half by 10. Okay. Now we just stamp. So what I did with this is, of course I used different colors of purple, all of our purples. And then the second layer is, that I embossed with white embossing powder. Okay, so um, now I think we're gonna do the same, we're gonna use the same stamps, but let's do it with our beautiful blues. Okay, we have so many to choose from. And so I haven't really thought about it any further than that. I just know we're gonna use the blues and we're gonna use this kind of a branch, cool branch stamp. You want to be able to fill in a cat. This is going to be our main image, let's say. And then we will fill in with this. And you could use um, the other pieces too to fill in. Uh, let's see. Let's use, yeah, let's use this once or twice. Why not? Put it in there. It all works, right? It all works together. <laughs> okay, let's see. Alrighty. So I hope all of you had a great time placing your first orders or placing your orders now that the catalog is fully live, fully available. Um, now what have I gotten on here already? Did I get some ink on there? Maybe. Oh, I think there's Versamark on this stamp. Sorry. It only has two sides, Lisa. You can't like keep turning it over. <laughs> Anyway, I had a very fun time placing my order, and um, I placed a lot of orders for lovely customers as well, so that was really fun, because I got to see, you know, of course, what everyone was getting, and everything was orderable. Some things were not orderable by the end of the day, or I should say they were on back order by the end of the day, so I swooped in there like a drone, and um, I got it all, got it all ordered. Hello, Cheryl. Nice to see you. Okay, let's start with um, a lighter, one of our lighter colors of blue. Now this is Pool Party. We can certainly use Pool Party. And we have Bermuda Bay. And we also have Mitt Necron. Um, yeah, okay, why not? I kind of like this for that, I don't know why, but we'll, 
will do it. Um, let's see here. We also have balmy blue. Uh, well, pool party is definitely a blue green color, and I feel like that one is too. Let's see, here's our pool party. I think this is good. What do you think? Oh, yes, Cheryl. Um, this is the Tasteful Touches stamp set. Uh, the full suite is called In Good Taste. You'll love it. If you don't have it already, tell me if you have it. And if you've played with it already or if you ordered it. Or you can all post while we're, while we're doing this. Feel free to chit-chat if you're new here. Uh, this is a talkative group. And I like it that way. And um, oftentimes I will look up and I'll have no idea what the conversation is. And that's totally fine. <laughs> because I will watch it and or I'll read all the comments at, towards the end. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do on Thursday nights, right? Once I finish is to read all the comments and respond. So anyway, you guys just chat amongst yourselves. I will definitely try to uh, look up and answer questions and all that stuff and oh I know I'm glad you like this because I certainly like it okay so I pulled out Coastal Cabana which is called in French actually Copa Cabana in case you were wondering um, I like to put the French stamps inside because then I feel like I'm doing some learning at the same time okay so we're gonna use this as our guide Maybe it would help you visualize this if I showed you what these three were. Now, I'm not sure if I can totally figure it out, but okay, no, I think I, this, okay, so this is what the Purple Posy paper looked like. Does that help give you a visual? So we're stamping just down the center. And we're trying to kind of make it even to the left and to the right. And that's how we're going to make the four panels. Okay, that's probably better. Because it's going to look strange here for a while. <laughs> okay, so now that I've kind of explained that, let me just start stamping. And already, I love it, right? It's beautiful. I am just going to go to the left and the right of that line. Now, you don't have to keep it as uniform as I have it. Um, I'm going to try and pop some of these out a little bit more than others. And I think the first time I did it, I think it could have even been more full. So then, you know, you learn something and you, you do something slightly different every time. So already, super pretty. I like it. And we may come back with Coastal Cabana again, and we might just be fine with it the way it is. Hey, Kathy, I think it's beautiful too, don't you? <laughs> oh gosh, Roz, don't get me started, because I know that song. You know, um, this will probably not surprise you, but I was a weird little kid. I was an only child for 10 years, and so I hung out with adults, and um, I was a rock hound. I went with my a set of my my and my aunts and uncles so I went with a set of them um, to gem shows okay if that tells you anything about me and um, liked it and one of the other things I did was I loved Barry Manilow in the first grade um, and so one year well probably in the first grade the Easter Bunny of all things brought me Barry Manilow. Ooh, I'm not sure I like that already. That's a little dark, isn't it? What do we think? Let me try it again. We may have to turn this over. Oh yeah, that looks better. Okay, sorry, we're gonna have to turn it over real quick. No problems. I knew I should have used my grid paper. I knew it. Anyway, yes, so um, the Easter Bunny brought me the 8-track, if any of you knows even what that is anymore. And, um, of Barry Manilow and I played the heck out of it and um, what else did I get right after that um, I think it was Donna Summer now is that like it was that's the era okay that I was like a first grader in if that gives you a little visual and I would um, so my mom worked until four o'clock every day and um, 
So I always had to vacuum, but after I vacuumed, or maybe sometimes before I vacuumed, I would turn on records. I can't believe I'm even saying this. I think I should not tell this story. This is so weird. All right, let's just focus on stamping. Um, <laughs> and finally, by the way, it's a beautiful day in Boise. I was a little hot. I kind of liked it better yesterday, but you know, I can't be so picky every day. Um, hello, Leslie. Hi, Brene. Oh gosh. Oh, nice, Jean. You haven't seen this kind of a stamping technique before? That's cool. Okay, Kathy knows what an 8-track is. Thank goodness. Well, if you're old, then I'm old, so we're not having any of that kind of talk. Whoops, wrong color. We're not having any talk about who's old. <laughs> and really, who cares? That's fine by me. Okay, that's better. So this is Mint Macaron, also known as Macaron Element. Yeah, that's what it is. <gasps> Shoot. We're just going to have to leave that. See, I started talking. I started speaking French. And then um, my mind went. So I was trying to do second generation stamping. But I have, kind of have a way to fix this. So you know what? I'm actually glad I did that. Maybe I did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Cindy. Nice to see you. So while I'm stamping this, I just want you all to know I'm very happy at the um, participation for the June Chopped Champion. Well, it's not a championship. The June Chopped Championship, okay? You might become the winner of Chopped Stamp Edition for June. And you still have time to sign up. I know we said we're cutting it, we were cutting it off on the 4th, but I haven't cut the kits yet. I'm going to cut them tomorrow night. So if you would still like to sign up for that and you're in the United States, I would love to have you. Uh, all you have to do is go over to the Stamping Zoo and there's a pay now button there. It's only $7. So we try to make it like affordable for everyone and just fun and, um, we will send the concept is just like the concept of chopped on the food network uh, we send you a packet of stampin up supplies and you have to use at least a little bit of it on a paper craft it has to be on the front of the paper craft this time okay and by paper craft I'm saying that because it doesn't have to be a card it can be a 3d object um, Brene I believe it was Brene I think yeah she made this cutest little it was like a dressing table or something it was so cute it had little curtains oh my gosh it was pretty brilliant actually so it doesn't have to be like anything specific but it has to be paper craft and you have to use at least a little bit of some of the supplies that we sent to you so um, yes Kathy um, I don't know if I texted you or if I wrote you back but I saw that you you um, wanted in and I'm happy to have you again of course so anyway you just jet on over there anybody that wants to do it in the United States now if you're in Canada you can still play because you just have to go sign up with the fabulous Jen Houston so um, just think about that and don't be scared if anyone's scared or thinking it's going to be like above you or too hard or something, it's not going to be. I can just tell you right now. Okay. So it's for anyone beginner, beginner to avid beginner to, well, no professionals. Are there professional stampers? I don't know. Okay. Brene says your dad sold cards and Ford used to put out, Oh, some cool eight track demo tapes. Sweet. <laughs> and I bet you guys probably drove cool cars, huh? That's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, now, now we're kind of finished with our stamping layer. And it looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? It does. You can say it. Now, I like to come along here, and you saw that I drew that light pencil mark. We're kind of safe in taking that out right now. So, you know, don't mash too hard on the pencil, but on the pencil mark, but you shouldn't have drawn a real heavy line anyway. So just draw a light line, but you will see that 
I'm leaving a mark up here. You don't even really need it because again, we're just going to measure the paper before we cut it. Yeah. Hang with me, kid. Okay. Now I just want to put a healthy dose <laughs> of embossing buddy over this area because we are going to now come in and we are going to stamp this beautiful flower with Versamark onto all over the image and then we're going to emboss it in white powder. Now, let's say you're a brand new stamper and you're like, I don't have embossing powder, I don't know what it is, I certainly don't have a heat gun, that just sounds dangerous. It's okay, because you could just stop right now, cut your four panels, and it's still just as fun. It has, this is just kind of a little added layer, right, because we like to add layers. <laughs> That's kind of what we do. <laughs> so I'm not being too careful. I already know kind of where my design is headed here. So I want to have just, I want to have these images come out into the card a little bit more than I did before. So I'm kind of running to the left and the right of that. And I definitely wanted to get, um, I Versamark over some of that dark image because I want to take that out of that card a little bit. I think I got there. Okay, so now it's one of the fun steps. Hello, Carolyn. So this is one of the fun things. Carolyn, I need to get back to you too, um, but I'm glad I saw your name. So for everyone in the United States, if you would like to order with me, particularly right now, I am having a BOGO sale. And what that means is for every dollar that you spend on product, so before tax and shipping, uh, in the new catalog, I have a little store over on my website again, where you can do some shopping for retired product of equal value. So, and then um, if I have to ship it to you, shipping applies, but if you are in the area, we can usually schedule a pickup pretty easily. And I have some good stuff over there, but Carolyn, I didn't get back to you yet because I'm gonna add some more things tonight. So I wanted you um, to be, be able to see everything before uh, before you made your choices, okay? Hey, Tango, you be quiet. See, even Tango's excited about the BOGO sale. He has no idea what it is, but he's just excited. I'm gonna put one more up here. Now that I see it, right, and I see what I would have got, I'm just gonna add one more up there, and I'm pretty sure that I didn't need any extra embossing buddy. I guess we'll find out, but I think we're good. Okay, maybe I'm gonna add one again. A little partial image. I'm trying to make sure I'm in screen. My screen seems awfully close today. I don't know what that's about, but we'll go with it. Um, so I added one more down at the end. See, I have the advantage of making that the purple set of cards earlier. So I kind of can visualize now what I want this to do. All right, let me move this because I'm gonna let you look at the heat magic, the um, heat embossing magic. <laughs> and I do not wanna blow all that extra powder all over the place. So now you need a heat, a heat tool. This is a heat tool that I bought from Stampin' Up before it was even marked Stampin' Up. And um, it's worked so well, it still works. But we do sell heat tools. And guess where they are? Yep, they're in the annual catalog. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn this on and let it heat up a little bit. I always test it on my wrist, like I'm testing it for a baby or something. And this powder is little combinations of pigment and wax and I don't know, probably some other secret stuff. So anyway, we heat it. And some people heat up from behind. That's fine, I've always done it this way. And so this is the way I do it. <laughs> Why would I change that now? So you can see, right? We're getting this really pretty image. And you know your embossing powder is cooked, if you will, when it turns bright white and then is smooth. 
there's a there's a really short period where it's bright white and it's bubbly. It's not done yet. You want to take it just a hair over that. Now you want to move on once your image is smooth because you don't want to burn your paper and you can burn the paper. Just moving on here. Now I don't quite know what this is going to turn out to look like. It might be too much of a pattern, but I think that's kind of the fun part of doing it this way too. It's a good little experiment for you as well. Okay, I think we got everything. Now, even if you just wanted to emboss that flower as a simple, a simple singular image, isn't it pretty? Look at that. Isn't this neat? Has lots of see-through, see-through parts that you could color, but um, or you could just leave it alone. So anyway, I like that, and um, I think we're there. Oh, thanks, Delinda. You know what? I really like the um, pool party. It's, it's fun to do it. Of course, I love the purples. That's kind of like my go-to. If I don't know what to do, I just grab those purples because I love them. <laughs> so now I'm going to grab the paper trimmer. I hope you can see the whole image because uh, when we slice it, you just, like I said, you just have to visualize it when it's cut, fully cut. So I'm trying to bring this whole thing in. So again, remember this is 10 inches long, so we just want to put it on the 5-inch mark and we're just gonna cut through. Oh, we're cutting our beautiful design, right? And then I told you that these, I want these to be three and three quarters, right? So they're gonna be three and three quarters, which meant they were seven and a half long. I'm not gonna show them to you yet. I'm gonna make you wait. And then we're gonna look at all three of them, or all four of them. Sorry, I can't count. <laughs> Now, I can do measurements, but apparently I can't count. Okay. Now, let's see what we made, right? Here's one. Oh, that's fun. Here's, here's that one that I thought was kind of goofy. You know what? It's fine. Um, we're, we are our own worst critics. Isn't that the case? Okay, let me separate them a little. Here's another one. No, here's this one. Okay. And then here's this one. Isn't that fun? I don't know. I just thought it was so fun. <laughs> I hope you guys do this. Um, oh, and sorry, Cindy, you were, you probably came in late and were like, what in the world is she doing? So I'm making, I made four card fronts and this was the first one that I made and showed earlier. So we just kind of did the same thing only on pool party with different colors of blue and again with the white embossing powder. So, whew, after all that, I needed a little fresca. Okay, let's make a card with it, right? I, I, um, I'm always sending out multiples of cards and so it's fun to make one of a kinds, but really the majority of card making I do is making multiples. So one thing that is a great um, help with that is the Stamparatus. And this is just one other technique that I think is really fun. And it makes you, makes you have slightly different cards. So everybody gets their own version, but it's still, the same process for you. <laughs> okay, so let's put this on Bermuda Bay, I think. What do you think? Let me know if you're very averse to that. Otherwise, I'm going to put it on Bermuda Bay. Let me just grab a scrap of it. Or, I mean, a card base. I'm probably not going to have a scrap of it, am I? And back to the paper. Tango, you be quiet. I'm just thank you. So the kids went to the groomer yesterday. It was very needed. Hi, Eileen. Nice to see you jumping on. You're never late, right? Because there's always the replay. And um, anyway, so they went to the groomers, and I swear, 
they did not cut Tango's, they didn't trim his head, or they didn't groom his head. Um, and I really didn't notice, okay, something's off with this card. I don't think this is right. Uh, anyway, I didn't really notice until I was petting him last night. And so I was like, what in the world is wrong with this kid? I mean, he just, it wasn't like I wanted it. It was, he still had mats behind his ears. So I really think they like kind of forgot and they gave them to me. So anyway, I was like, well, I'm not going back. Ain't nobody got time for that. And um, so he's going to get a mom haircut. So he got a little bit of the mom haircut last night and it was in like, it wasn't even very good lighting. <laughs> It wasn't good lighting, okay? It was over on the couch. <laughs> I was like, uh, no, we're not doing this. And he also looked like, he kind of looked like a lion body. You know, like his body was really closely trimmed. And then his head was just so long. And I'm just like, no, we're not having this. Okay, one thing I need to mention here is there's this fine layer of embossing powder, even though I was pretty careful. So... <laughs> I know Eileen, right? Mom haircut. And let's preface or let's add to that and say it's a mom haircut from a mom who doesn't cut hair <laughs> at all. I cut paper and that's it. So anyway, I just went to town back behind his ears. I was like, he just needs this weight off of him. And he already looks better. At least, you know, if you don't look too closely, he looks better. Um, but so that's going to be one of my projects tonight is finishing up his haircut. Oh, Lord. But dang it. I know. And I hate to call and, well, no, I don't hate to call and complain because I'm not rude about it. But I will be telling them, like, you've got to cut this child's hair. Okay. Here's what I did on this card. And I, I think I'm going to stick to this, um, Oh no, this, I'm sorry, this card is slightly larger. So let me just refresh my memory. These cards are gonna be three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to do a black mat that is four by five and a quarter, okay? So let's just stick with that. The last time I thought it was a tiny bit too skinny. Uh, black definitely packs a punch but it was just a little too skinny. Yeah, I like that better. See? Okay, oh, so anyway, those flowers were upside down. That would be a little weird. So you're going to have, these cards are gonna be on the left or the right, just depending on, of course, which side they were. So, okay, here's that one that I was so worried about, and now I'm like, it's totally fine, I like it. But this is how they're going to be. They're going to be on the left or on the right. I just think they're so pretty. And I really liked this one, actually. Maybe because it has two full flowers on it. Do we want to use this one? Yeah, I think we do. Okay, the only groomer in Whoop Whoop quit. I knew how to do Sally. Okay, she looked so cute when I saw her last week. Did you get a new groomer or is that your work? Gosh, I mean, I'm so impressed if it is. Good for you. <laughs> One other thing I want to stamp for this card is I made an insert, a Whisper White this time. You know, I usually do kooky colors, but this is going to be a surprise for whoever gets this card because I don't always put white in there. And why don't we use Pool Party and stamp that beautiful flower one more time? It's just so pretty. Like I said, I came for the feather and I stayed for the whole stamp set because it's just so pretty. Um, but cats, how, don't you have to brush out the cats though, Eileen? I guess you don't trim them necessarily. Um, and maybe you don't even have long haired cats. But yeah, no dogs, and not all dogs, but dogs that don't shed generally go to the groomers. Um, so anyway, yeah. And it's not like discount groomers, okay? It's like my mom said, maybe they just missed a spot or whatever. And I'm like, they missed his head is what they missed. <laughs> oh, God. 
yeah, you know what, Leslie, what's so funny, but um, that is just about how much I pay for my dogs, too. I mean, I have two of them, of course, but that's what I pay for each dog. And But they go in about every six weeks, because I kind of like them, well, a little short. All right, anyway, I'll stop my um, complaining. It was kind of funny, because I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? He's going to look like a mess. And then I'm like, you know what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And so I did. He doesn't know any better. I don't let him look in the mirror. Now look at that. It makes a beautiful, simple card, right? And we are keeping this pretty simple tonight. Now I am going to bring the Stamparatus in because I want a really strong, clean, black sentiment on this card. I don't want to mess it up. And um, so I'm going to make sure I don't knock on wood, kind of, by putting it on the Stamparatus. Now let's see what our other sentiments are. The good things in life are better with you. That's the one I used on this purple and I thought that it had, well, of course I love the sentiment, but I think it has good placement for the way this card is. Um, but we also have you are the best, just saying hello and you are so special. And I kind of like, preview them, if you will, by just taking the stamp and putting it directly on your card front. I think this is really important. Again, like visualizing things, just really important. I already like it. What do you think? I think it fits the um, space nicely. Why are they no longer selling the extra plates? I'm not sure about that, Eileen. I have not... Um, I didn't review the Stamparatus page, so I don't know why they wouldn't be doing that. But, um, okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm using the Stazon stamp cleaner. I'm using Stazon on these sentiments because remember, I told you I wanted like a nice, intense black sentiment, and that's what, stamp, what Stazon does for you. It's a little darker than Memento. And you know, Stazon is the ink that you want to use when you're using water-based products. That's not why we're using it tonight, but that's why we have it primarily. It, it stains the stamps. Um, you can't get the ink off. But if you have that cleaner, then see, that it just comes clean great. Just blot it up with the chamois, and then you're good to go. Now, leaving it stained, I don't think really affects the stamping quality at all. Um, it's just about, I don't know, keeping them conditioned. Let's, you know, you might want to have this down set for 10 years. And so anyway, that was a little about that. Um, all right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this guy in here. If you haven't used the Stamparatus before, I really want you to just take a look at this. Um, the way I'm doing this, this is the Stamparatus, this function at its most basic. But it has so many other ways to be used. Um, so anyway, this is its most basic, right? It's a precision placing tool. And so you get two really strong magnets when you get it. And you get two of these plates. And these plates are hinged so that if you want to stamp something repeating all down the page, you can do that with the same precision. Uh, we're not going to use that function tonight, but that's just, I want you to know that. And if Eileen mentioned you can't get extra plates, and that may be the case. Like I said, I, um, I, I haven't looked at that page. But it comes with two plates, okay? And you can flip them over. So that's four surfaces that you can have stamps on at the same time, which is pretty good. I usually use the KISS principle for myself and use one side <laughs> but sometimes I forget it has a lot of other um, it has a lot of other functions now since I want you to be able to see this but I can't really see it uh, because the cameras where my head should be I need to lift this up and look at it and I can see that it's a little a little off to the right um, here, I'm gonna take it away for just a minute, sorry. So you need to look at it face, you know, you need to be up over your stamp looking at it, and then you can see exactly where it is to be straight. 
There's also grid marks on these uh, plates that help you know. And I'm gonna take one final look at it. Oh, I love it. Okay, that's all you do. Okay, let me try and get this whole thing into screen so that, like I said, if you haven't used the Stamparatus before, I want you to know about it. I also think it's really great for beginning stampers because if you don't yet have um, a large supply of acrylic blocks, you can use the Stamparatus. It fits any block or it fits any stamp size. So um, we just stamped that down with success because we already knew where it was going to be. Now, I think it's stamped just perfect. And this is a really fine lined stamp, so I'm not gonna go over it again. But if you needed to, all you do is do that because it's in exactly the same place and you've held the paper in the same place with the magnets, okay? If you um, are curious, and want to know anything else about the Stamparatus, please just ask me either during this video or offline. And, um, you know, I'll see your comments and I can always send you a quick video or point you to um, Stampin' Up! resources. But I think it's, um, it's a great little, great little tool to have. It's not, it's not just gimmicky. Yeah. Hey, Cindy Howard, you shared my video with seven other stampers and you're yelling at me, but I appreciate that. I'm glad I saw that. <laughs> so thank you. You're a good one. And I hope you're having a great night. Um, if you're coming in late, um, please feel free to go back and watch the replay later. But we are just, we're kind of just designing a really cool card with the Tasteful Touches stamp set. And it does have coordinating dies and a suite of products, but I'm really focusing on the stamp set tonight. Sometimes um, it's good to just focus on the basics, right? And stamps, I mean, the company's name is Stampin' Up, for goodness sake, it's what they do. So anyway, uh, I really liking the stamp set the more I use it. Okay, so that's that one side, remember, where I was, um, I don't know, wondering what I was supposed to be doing. But don't ever worry about turning over your cardstock and using it as a test, too. Uh, unless you're using Stampin' Blends alcohol markers, the regular classic Stampin' Ink doesn't bleed through our cardstock. So you can use the back for a just-in-case piece of paper like I did, or you can use it to test out your colors. So, no, Cindy, really, I was just teasing you. That, don't be sorry, I think it's great. And you know what, it got my attention. <laughs> and I saw it immediately. <laughs> so there you go. All right, oh, I, darn it, I put that down too early. Okay, we can fix this, this is okay. Remember what I did over here was I added this little thin strip like I said, Jen McGuire did that. And for some reason, I was just in love with it. It tricks the eye a little bit. And you don't quite know if it's under the print or over the print. So, and I guess you could get the same effect by cutting this panel and then gluing that over here. But be that as it may, we are going to use the paper trimmer in a scrap. And we're going to get a really thin piece of black because we can do that with the paper trimmer like I don't even think it's an eighth of an inch wide yes Cindy and you know what you shared with seven stampers and I think that's something to yell about because I love stampers <laughs> so I'm glad to have you here okay let's see here if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just really trying to just get this over the line. The other thing that you need to know is when you're trying to cut a really thin little strip or cut the very end off of something, um, draw the blade down, okay? Don't push it up because there's just a slight chance that your paper could move. Oh, look, this is a beautiful strip. That's just what we needed. That's probably better than the last one I made. <laughs> 
excellent. I love it. Okay, now even though I didn't do it in the right order, the right order would be to place this black paper or this little black strip before you mounted it up on the black cardstock. But we can do this because remember, we have the nerd tool, the T square. That's right. So we're going to put the T square where we want our little black strip of paper. Okay. And then I'm going to take the ultra fine glue pen and this is good stuff. You kind of have to hold it like this. So this is, you have to hold this little black part or it comes unscrewed too. And then you think you're using the fine tip glue pen, but you really not. You want it to look like this a little metal piece. Now I'm going to leave this here. Here's a cute little trick. Leave it here. I want it to go across some of the white. I'm going to take the glue pen. First of all, I'm going to make that, make sure that's nice and square. Okay. On the T square. I think you can see that. Let me bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to run this part, this ultra fine glue right along the edge of that T square. Then I'm going to bring this tiny piece of paper in and I don't have to wonder where to put this thing, right? Because I just put it right up against the T-square. And then I'm going to kind of use my nail to put it in place. However, if you don't have long nails, you can use the take your pick tool. Now, I think I got that pretty good considering, again, I can't really see it because the stinking camera's in my way. And then I'm just going to take this very little part. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't it a cool little finishing? Yeah. So do that since it's almost like a very thin strip of ribbon. I think that's what it appears to be at first, doesn't it? Kind of fun. And then you get the lid right back on this ultra fine glue pen, or it won't be a glue pen it'll, anymore. It'll just be a container of glue. <laughs> so trust me, I know. I don't know that I've ever finished a whole container of ultra fine glue. So there you go. All right, now we can put this up on the whole card. I'm just so excited to see you guys. Sometimes I get distracted. Hello, Kathleen. Popping on. Hope you're having a good night. Boy, there's been a lot of demonstrators on talking about their orders, huh? So, um, someone asked me earlier what I ordered. I think Kathy did. And we were talking about this earlier on Vicky's Live. And I said, yes. <laughs> That's what I ordered. If you ask me what what I ordered. It doesn't matter what you say. It's the answer is probably yes. Um, the easier question to ask is what didn't I order? That's what it feels like, but you know what? It's all good. And, um, it keeps me mentally sane and, uh, it keeps me just keeps me square. Eileen, you haven't got your catalog yet. Okay. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're not alone because, um, I'm assuming you're in the U S you know, with COVID and everything else, the post office slowed down a little bit right about the time the catalogs went out. And, but I am happy to tell you there's a beautiful PDF available. And right after I get done here, I'm going to upload it to my Facebook or my blog. Again, the stamping zoo.com. Um, the old ones out there and we couldn't lot, we couldn't load it until today. We can't show off any new things until they're new. Anyway, um, I'm going to load it there. So if you haven't been able to look at the PDF yet, you can certainly pop over there and, um, it'll be there for you. I can already tell. Okay. So I'm trying to use, you know, these, the lines on this ruler, they help me out a lot at the end of the day. God bless it. I need it. Um, Oh brother, I can't even see, can I? I better just eyeball it. <laughs> I almost glued that off the card. 
Oh man, I haven't been making cards long. You have to hold off ordering later in the month. You know what, Susan? That's just fine. The great thing is these products are going to be around for a year. We're not done with this card. Um, so you have time. It's all right, my friend. There are beautiful things await. Isn't that fun? All right, let's do, so on this one I did a mix of rhinestones. I'm kind of liking that idea. I did the clear, and then I did um, some gorgeous grape. And it's from the Holiday Rhinestone Basic Jewels. I don't know if they're in the annual, yeah, I think they are in the annual catalog, but um, they're available and they're fantastic. So uh, let's just put a few of these on. Let's mix and match it like I did before. I see some pool party in here. Now this is like a big, it looks like a jumbled mess, but it's an organized mess. I cut a lot of these, I end up cutting a lot of these little embellishments for card classes that I make and send. If you're in the United States, uh, feel free to take a look at um, the card classes I offer. But anyway, it looks like a jumbled mess because I often cut them into little strips, but don't you worry, they're still perfectly fine. And so now I want to grab a couple of the clear ones because life is too short to just use three rhinestones and they're such a good bargain. Anything on the embellishments page, pages I should say, are gorgeous, yes. Oh, Susan made her first shaker card today. Susan, round of applause, Susan. Wasn't it fun? And don't you like, how many times have you played with it? Be honest, like 20 times, probably. That's how I sometimes will play with shaker cards so much that um, they're kind of worn out by the time I send them out. So they're super fun. And yeah, that the jar of flowers makes it so fun. I love it. You're going to get stamping stuff for your birthday. I love that, Amy. Oh, man. If I had someone to ask, <laughs> I'd be like, can you get me this stuff, please? Um, that's all right. I, I got it handled, right? So um, then let's, these are just rhinestone basic jewels. You always want to have these on hand because... You can color them to be just almost any color you want as long as you have a Stampin' Blend. I usually use the dark ones. So let me, let's see if I have one to show you. I have one that I colored black. And that was kind of interesting because it's really like a smoky blue. But let's see what else I have. I have um, Cherry Cobbler. So I usually use the bullet end because I don't want the... Um, rhinestones to break apart the um, paintbrush end. Now this one wants to run around on the paper. It's like a little game. <laughs> Great. I don't know if I can play that game tonight. Okay, so anyway, um, you can color a lot of our embellishments with Stampin' Blends. You can color ribbon with Stampin' Blends. So that's another way to stretch all of your supplies, right? Okay, here's our card. I don't know which one I like better. Do you guys have a favorite? Let me know. Pool Party or Highland Tether. You can call it purple or green. Um, and let me clear just a little space, move some of these beautiful supplies, and we're gonna make one more card, at least a card front, okay? So you guys let me know what you like best, or if you don't like it, I guess you can tell me that too, but that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. I was trying to decide if I wanted to hear that. And then I'm like, yeah, okay. You're free to say that. Um, anyway, and then the really cool thing is now I have a stash of three other card fronts that I can make. Or that I, you know, I can just, whenever I need them, I can slap them, slap together the card like this. It doesn't even have a, need to have a mat. I just need to choose a sentiment, right? And lucky me. I have three in Highland Heather too. Well, hello, Sue, and thanks for just joining. We just finished making this card based on this card that I made earlier today. And don't you worry that you missed it. You can just go right back and watch the replay. 
You can find out all the colors I used and stuff. Hey, Eileen, your birthday's tomorrow? Nice. <laughs> As you are watching videos, you will see what, oh, she's talking to Susan. Okay, sorry, I won't get in the middle of that. Thank you. Yes, you definitely want to, you know, make a little shopping list. I really like, see, of course I order at the beginning because I want to be able to share with you makes me just as excited as getting the products and using them myself. However, sometimes then I'm totally convinced to buy extra things, right? When I see somebody else working with them. So it's really fun that way. Yeah. So now you can kind of take a little time and really make a great list for yourself. Okay. Now, so now let's use this feather stamp that I was so gaga about, right? And still am. And, um, Let's make it in greens. So I have a little, this is just gonna be a single card front. Um, this is in soft sea foam. However, let me say, you can do, so the technique that we just did, um, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, where we cut the paper into four different pieces, you can do that with any stamp set. You could add die cuts if you wanna get, you know, crazier with it. Um, I would say if you're going to cut across the die fronts, make sure that you are going to be able to adhere them once you cut them. But otherwise, just there's nothing that's going to stop you except for your imagination. Um, you can just choose anything to put in there. I think it's going to be really fun. So I would love to see the ideas that you come up with uh, by using that technique. And you feel free to tag me. You can also post it on my business page and then we will show it off and it will be really fun. Uh, so if you ever want to do that, um, I love getting examples and then I, and then I get to learn something new as well. Okay, here we go. I need some more Fresca. Woo, you're wearing me out. Okay. Where was I with that beautiful feather stamp? Look at that thing. Isn't it great? It's great just as a stamp, right? So very pretty. It would be very easy to fussy cut out. It doesn't have a die cut and it doesn't matter. You don't need that. Uh, let your mind, you know, expand. I think it's actually kind of good that we don't have a die cut for every single image because then you're forced to use it in a different way or you put it on a label or you know what I mean? So anyway, um, this doesn't have a die cut. Don't let that stop you from fussy cutting it out. We have these great paper snips. They're only 10 bucks. They'll put your eye out, so be careful. But other than that, um, they're fantastic. They're an amazing bargain, I think. All right, so I was thinking again about kind of similar color ideas where I thought we would just use several different greens and as I said that I was looking at granny apple green and I thought you know I love granny apple green but I don't think I want to use that on this I want to use soft sea foam I want to use pear pizzazz and we could use a neutral as well. I don't want to use Mossy Meadow. That's too much. Do we want to use Crumb Cake? What do you think about that? Or do we want to use Sahara Sand? Let's stamp it and check it out. All right? Let's check this thing out. I know I'm missing comments. I'm so sorry, but um, okay, that's beautiful. So that is Crumb Cake. And then this is Sahara Sand. I'm gonna, I don't need to clean it. They're so close. Oh, slight difference, right? This one's a little more subtle. I think I'm gonna go with more subtle, which is shocking. Have you ever heard me say that? I seriously doubt it. <laughs> but you know what? You can teach a dog new tricks. An old dog new tricks, I should say. Okay, the first thing I probably should do is move those finished cards off to the side before they get feathers stamped on them. We can, we can admire those later, Lisa. Put them off to the side now. 
<laughs> okay, I'm going to start with my lightest color. And this is going to be an all over design. So we're going to do lots of feathers all over this thing. I don't, I was kind of putting them in the same direction and I don't want to do that this time. I just want tons of feathers, overlapping feathers, and then I want to come in with the texture and um, then that's going to be like another layer with the stencil and the embossing paste. Okay, come on now. These can sometimes, I'm showing you this because they can sometimes be a little tight. So what I like to do, some people put chapstick on the guides, but I find if you just kind of work with them a little bit, they're fine. Then pretty soon they're slipping and sliding all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to take this. This is, oh, it's beautiful. It's soft sea foam. With this kind of a random pattern, I guess there's not any rule. All you, what I think makes it interesting is to have at least one of a whole image. So depending on what size it is, you know, um, that can be like several as in this case, or you can get just one or two. But um, I like that. And then you definitely wanna have some going off of the paper. And you definitely want some that are just parts. This, oh my gosh. Okay, you know what? If I was just going to be simple stamping, this with a sentiment on it, what do you think? I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Wow. So that's soft seafoam paper, soft seafoam ink, one stamp, and then that's it. Maybe I'll make that afterwards, just to prove to myself that I can make a simple stamping card. <laughs> Cut out extra images. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, that's a good idea. Your gifts will be alcohol related, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, Eileen, perfect. <laughs> you know, alcohol does go along with stamping sometimes, not just alcohol markers. <laughs> so that's perfect. You just do you, Eileen. I love it. Let's bring the parapazats in now. Uh, no, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like I want to stamp with the um, Sahara sand. I don't know why, I just do. You can also vary this a lot by using second generation stamping, right? So now I'm just kind of making sure that I don't have the feathers going in the same direction as I'm just kind of adding them adhering to my same kind of rule I've set for myself of having some whole images, some partial images, and nothing really going into a pattern. Trying to distribute them evenly, that's another thing. That's probably the thing I kind of try to make sure to do also, is to try and make sure that there's you know, if I'm doing like an all over image, that there's Sahara sand feathers kind of all over the card. Cindy says, I like using embossing paste. You've even used reinker. Exactly. So we have two embossing pastes. You, they come in shimmer or white. They're back there with all the other little jewels in the annual catalog. I think the shimmer is $9 and the embossing paste is eight. The white embossing paste is eight and they last just sort of forever if you seal them properly. So we will talk about that in just a minute. Um, but it's very easy. And then, um, cause it might not be something you use every day. I don't know, I don't. But when I'm ready for it, I want it, you know? So um, this is really turning out kind of fun, don't you think? I'm having fun stamping it, that's for sure. Now, as you kind of are finishing with your final color, in this case, you know, I chose three different colors. As you're kind of finishing with your color, you might notice that you want a little more brown somewhere else or a little more green or, you know, just do that. There's no rules. You can go back and re-stamp things. Um, that's totally fine. I kind of think I like it because you can still clearly see all of the different feathers and to me this looks like a bunch of feathers have fallen on the floor and the floor just happens to be soft sea foam in color 
Let's just take a look a minute. Take a minute to look at that. It's very pretty, isn't it? If you look quickly, you'll see centipedes. Oh, Lois, you little tricky devil. It's like a 3D poster, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. Yes, Jean, I like the feather image too. It's beautiful. I think we have a feather in at least a couple other stamp sets. It always catches my eye. Does it catch your eye too? Um, is that just a Lisa thing or is that an everybody thing? Anyway, this is a great one. I love the size of it and I love the image. It's top notch. Just like all the rest of our stamps. Our stamps are such high quality. You can use them for years. I guarantee it. Okay, now we're going to take that beautiful image, right? And we're going to smear some embossing paste all over it. Well, not all over it. Hello, Anna. Thanks for jumping in. So this is the embossing paste. It doesn't come with this on it. This is press and seal. Okay. This is, what is it? Like probably six or eight ounces. I bought this when it first came out. No, it's only four ounces. So I bought this when it first came out. And the only thing I did that was aside from the regular packaging is once I was finished with it, I took this press and seal, same piece I've used every time. The lid happened to stick to it. And that's how I store it. It's just a little extra insurance to keep it. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like frosting. And so you just kind of keep it. Uh, it doesn't dry out like that. Now, I think it was Eileen or Cindy. Cindy that said she colors it. So this is the white. You can do the same with the white shimmer. Okay. I'll just show you a little bit. What I'm using right here is also a must have. So when you get one of the embossing pieces, pastes, oh my gosh, pieces. When you get one of the embossing pastes, make sure you get a set of our palette knives. You get three for $5 and you can just have them forever. <laughs> these obviously you can see I used some pink at one point in time so let me just show you this is a crumb cake this is kind of perfect right crumb cake reinker. you just add a little bit oh this doesn't even I don't even think I've had that open before probably be a lot to add a full drop you can also mix this on other things but your blocks make great palettes for all this kind of mixing and stuff that you do so I know Cindy I agree with you you can do so much with so much with all the different pieces and parts this bundle also comes with some really cool faux suede trim I will get that out but it's it is um, a knockout now if I was really wanted this to be true crumb cake color I would add more white but see well no it looks pretty good so then you just mix it up then you've got it to use I, however, think I want to stick with the white. Now, the other thing is when you're cleaning it off of your tools and stuff. Oh, um, well, that makes me happy, Leslie. On the list. Over in the Wup Wup, they're going to be using tasteful touches. <laughs> um, I usually will clean that off with water. But really, if you do it right away, that's just a baby wipe. So, no magic there. Now we have two sets of masks. This is just one of the masks from them. Um, I thought this was a cool random design that didn't look like the feathers, but didn't take too much away. So we have some other masks. Let me just show you my other choices. Why not? Then you'll know if you, if you haven't seen the masks before, you'll know what's available. So there's the tree. I thought eh, that doesn't make any sense. There's some brick. I thought about that. Also polka dots. I thought they were kind of going to be too cutesy though. Then there was this one. These, these couple were out because they're too busy. I think they're going to take away from my feathers. I hope you can see those. And then that is beautiful again, but it really needs to be done on its own. And then this one, um, oh, this is clouds. I love it, but no, it doesn't really go with the feathers. So anyway, then I was like, hey, I love these diamonds. Here's all you do. It is really kind of like frosting a cake. And it's also like um, 
if you've ever done any grouting of, of patio papers or anything like that, it really reminds me of that. So I am just gonna hit a few spots on this card. So you come in with more paste than you need, okay? And then you scrape it away. I'm trying to be careful because I want some right in the middle there of the card. And then you just kind of bring it over in several little places and wherever you want. You can do partial design, right? You can take it right up to the edge or, so the embossing paste gives you tremendous control just because of um, the thickness of it. Now I want maybe like a little thin triangle right off to the edge here. And you can just do lots of cool things with the embossing paste. It's just really fun. Just one more really cool tactile thing. Now see, I got it all over my grid paper, but that's all right. There's more grid paper where that came from. I just wanna make sure I don't get it, um, ruin the design that I have going on. And then I think I want one more kind of thin triangle right up here. Now, I kind of got on the card a little bit, I just noticed. You can take that palette knife, if you do it right away, and just kind of scrape it off. All right, let me bring this a little closer so you can see. It's a more subtle effect than a lot of things, but you can see and feel it a lot more clearly in real life. I'm gonna take and straighten the edge of this. It also dries really quickly. It's not dry yet, but um, give it five minutes, it'll be dry. So I think that's just kind of another fun way. And like I said, um, you know, like we did at the beginning, you can change the color out to be anything as long as you have the reinker. Very fun. Okay, so that, I will turn that into a card um, tonight probably, maybe tomorrow, but I'll turn that into a card and I will post that. So I always post pictures after the lives. And um, like I said, friendly reminder, I sell all of these products. Isn't that cool? So you don't have to look at it and then wonder like, oh man, where do I get that? If you're in the US, you can shop with me. And I would love to be your demonstrator and earn your business. And um, so anyway, let's get back to what we were working with. We were working with Tasteful Touches stamp set and we kept it very basic, but our cards are not basic, are they? They're really cool. So these are just card fronts. Again, I will turn them into cards shortly, but these are the other cards that we made with that really cool technique where you can make four card fronts at once. I think that's really fun. I'm definitely going to be doing more of that. I hope you all enjoyed this. It was so fun. I didn't get to visit as much as I sometimes do with you because I was actually trying to um, do something here. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just kick back and visit with you, don't I? And I don't know if you enjoy that or not, but I sure enjoy it. <laughs> so I appreciate your uh, friendship, your support, uh, your sharing of ideas with me, and just sharing the love of stamping with you. I love our little community, right? So we have lots of fun things coming. Uh, we have lots of fun things coming. I think you can probably expect to see me again sometime this weekend. Uh, if you haven't watched me before, I'm always live on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock Mountain. But like I said, I like to pop on um, whenever I have time. So um, I do believe... The um, Mr. Brown is going to be bringing me quite a large selection of items um, tomorrow. Might be as late as Monday, but I somehow ordered it second day air. So I think it's going to be here tomorrow. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Like I said, I hope there was something on from tonight that you can use for yourself. And uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Until then, please be safe, and we'll see you later.